Okay, so people sent me this link and said I'm going to freak out when I watch this video. Uh, you know, I like you know, so how much time do we spend busting audio myths. But, um, you know, I, I can play guitar. I'm not like a guitar expert or anything. Uh, so I don't tend to watch these guitar thingies too terribly much unless I'm trying to learn how to fix something on a guitar. This channel looks familiar. Music is win. Um, I don't know if this is one of those hypey clickbait ones I can't stand, but uh, I don't know. When the first thing I always see, it's always like a surprised look on somebody's face or something. Uh, I don't know. Let's see. I'm, let's not judge. Uh, I don't know why I'm supposed to freak out on this video. So let's uh, let's just go and see what what we got here. You may have heard that are untrue. And I'm going to dispel those myths about guitar playing and guitar in general. Now, some All of these right. things you may have already heard about or formed opinions on. So hopefully you agree with me. Otherwise, you're really not going to like me. In all seriousness, uh, I did do a lot of research on some of the more controversial points that I'll be making in this video. And of course, this is not necessarily an original idea, is it? There have been other YouTube right, personalities who have made lists about guitar. Myth, myth, myth. Unique perspectives, I think, that I can offer you. So without further ado, let's jump into 10 guitar myths that you believe. Myth number one, you need big hands to play the guitar. Steve Vai, huge hands. Jimi Hendrix, huge hands. Paul Gilbert, huge hands. All right, well, here's my initial thoughts on this one. Um, the bigger the hands you are, the bigger spread you can run on any scale length. The only time the big hands is a disadvantage is when you're on tiny frets. You know, when you're when you're way up high on a normal 25 and a half inch scale length, um, the top frets feel like an ukulele, right? Or worse, they could feel a lot smaller than an ukulele. Uh, and, you know, that's why I have one of those 29 inch scale length guitars where the 24th fret feels awesome. But you know, in general, the, the bigger your hands, the easier time you're going to have at, at any given scale length until you're tripping over your hands. I, mean, I, I don't know if there's really a way around that. You, you could be it could be nicer to have skinny fingers than fat fingers, I suppose. So you, I guess you get a little bit more out of uh, the size. But, you know, for me, I would love to have a 24 and three quarter scale length seven string, but I, I don't know of any. They're all 25 and a half or, or bigger. Uh, you know, I have a 27, I have a 29. Um, I most are, I'm going to have one, two, three, four, four at 25 and a half. Man, I got too many guitars, but I love these guitars. Um, but yeah, how, I, I don't know. You, you don't need big hands to play guitar. I guess you could have a small guitar to play guitar. But if you want to make those, what's that, the, the, the hammer on thing that, um, uh, one of the Judas Priest guys does in Painkiller. Good luck. I can't do it on a 25 inch, uh, 25 and a half inch scale length guitar. I'm, I'm sure people with my size hands can, but I can't. Me, huge hands. Did I just put myself in the same sentence as Vi, Hendrix, and Gilbert? What an arrogant bastard. The truth is hand size can be an advantage regarding certain yeah. situations where you have to reach across many different frets, but Overall, no, you do not need big hands to be an amazing guitar player. And you also don't need skinny fingers versus fat fingers to be a dexterous and astronomically quick guitar player. The fact is you will develop muscle memory in your fingers and hands and they will go to the correct place that they are supposed to go without you even thinking about it. Your fingers are not too fat to do these things. Any hand can be trained to do any sort of movement regarding dexterity. Also, my fretting hand can actually stretch about an inch further than my picking hand, and that is because of... Yeah, you know, I, I show this to students all the time and parents. I say, look, this is this is what a lifetime of guitar playing does. Your, your left, my, you know, in my case, my left hand can stretch so much farther than my right hand. But still, yet, yeah, if I had bigger hands, they could stretch all the farther still. There's, you know, like they say in, in uh, muscle cars, right, or car racing or whatever, there's no replacement for a displacement. Um, there's a lot of things you can do, but, uh, you know, you, you, you can't, you're not really going to fight physics there. The flexibility that I built up over time, you can develop flexibility. It's like yoga for your hands. 
anybody can do it. Your hands will become stronger. It's easy to blame issues when you're just starting out on guitar on small hands, but the fact is you're just not good at guitar yet. So yeah, I, I don't think this is a myth. Um, I'm not going to freak out. I don't know why I'd be freaking out. I just, I just, I think he's, he's overstating it. Look, I want everybody to play guitar if they want to play guitar. So even if you got small hands, listen, <laughs> there's a video, go type in Indonesia Ingve. And there's a guy there who's was born with, or something happened. His hands are like backwards and stuff and he's playing. So yeah, you can play, but, but you know, big hands, it's going to be easier. I don't, I'm not freaking Keep out. Keep practicing your hands too. More gain, heavier toe. Okay. No, that's wrong. In fact, for recording and live performance alike, you'll actually have a more punchy and defined and ultimately heavier sound if you dial back the gain a little bit. You'll also have a much more articulate picking attack that will reveal exactly what it is you're playing. Yeah, you know, this is one, like when you see, all right, well, there's exceptions. Like if, if it's a long part, like a sustained part, and it's really supposed to sound like static electricity and lightning getting destroyed in the air and just crazy carnage and stuff, piles and piles and piles of gain, you know, it's just going to do it. Like, you know, Go run your Fender Twin on uh, Owner of a Lonely Heart at the beginning there and see if it gives you that same effect. But it, it's true, you know, like to be able to have a little bit of, you know, if you pick harder, it comes out louder, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. Um, a, a slightly cleaner tone and, you know, not just cleaner uh, tone, but way more mid-range than you'd expect often. Uh, you know, early on in my career, we were setting up for a Megadeth recording and, and there's Dave Mustaine's gear all set up, Bradshaw board, Marshall 800, whatever thing. And, and one of his guitars sitting on a stand and the band wasn't due to come in till the next day. And so I'm thinking, man, I'm never going to get another chance to, to pick up Dave Mustaine's guitar and play stuff. And here I am trying to make these, you know, I go turn it on, hit some chords and it just, I mean, thing may as well have been clean, you know. I'm like, what the hell is this? This isn't, this isn't that mega destruction, devastation tone and stuff. It's just like clang. You know, I mean, I thought I was the Rascals or something. And uh, you know, next day he comes in, plugs in, turns on, same way. Didn't even fire up the board. Just, just still the way it was, where it was going straight into the amp, and it just sounded like massive thunder of doom and death you know uh so <laughs> yeah this is right and you know i i end up you know over the years putting way and way and just uh moving more mid-range into the tone as well and uh but you know this is like like uh, like slipper man says uh, i'll give you a fender twin and a telecaster and you're never going to get that carcass tone not in a million years i don't care what you uh what you think is in your hands so you know there's there's uh there's a lot of truth to this and if you're having trouble getting your guitars to poke through a mix, um, turn down the gain. Watch what happens. You know, th this is why I like recording the DIs because you can always change that later. And you'd be surprised just how crazy distorted stuff sounds, even though it's pretty clean. Like if you if you listen to two signals in isolation, one of them might just sound like, you know, completely wimpy clean. And the other one sounds like death metal distortion from hell. And then... Um, when you put it in the mix, you'd be surprised just how little you could tell them apart tone wise. But one of them is way easier to hear in the mix. And you're actually finding yourself EQing chunks out of it in order to, to not take up too much space. So uh, give that a try, you know, less gain, uh, more mids. Forcing you to actually execute your parts well for them to sound good, which is a good thing because we want to be good guitar players. And you will be a great guitar player if you can play on a bit less of a gain setting. Think about ACDC's guitar tone. Those songs were heavy as hell and they did not need the gain dimed for them to achieve that heavy sound. Yep, that reminds me of another myth. side I don't know. myth I'm not to freaking dispel. Out. More gain by how long you've been playing the guitar. This right. is maybe the question I've received most from non-guitar yeah, players or hobbyists. Playing? How long have you been playing the guitar? And here's the thing. You know, I've gotten years uh, almost of stretches where I barely touch the guitar at all. So. Uh, somebody who'd been playing for a year watching YouTube, like we always get upset, right? There's little kids that watch YouTube that annihilate us. It ain't, it ain't the, uh, the number of years you're playing. It's, uh, you know, how are you learning? What are you doing? How often are you actually playing versus 
just owning a guitar or whatever. If I told you that I've been playing guitar for 20 years, you would think that I'm better than the same version of myself who said I've been playing for 10 years. More means better, right? But what if I'd only played a couple times a month for an hour here and there over the yeah, span of this. 20 years versus every day for 45 minutes for four years? The truth is I would be in right. a much no, better situation. Right. I'm not freaking out. Not I'm freaking not to out. Sound like a or analog is better. Oh, okay. This must be what, what years they want. Analog is better than digital. Point. Myth four, analog is better than digital. Ah, a nice tone snob myth, wherein the tone snob spends more time collecting and analyzing gear than actually practicing the guitar. I'm always wary of people who review gear and know everything about gear who can't actually play the guitar that well. It's like, how can you identify any tonal differences in gear when you're just playing the same five crappy blues licks over and over again? <laughs> the thing is, the difference between- an How am I freaking out? This guy is completely right. It is, it's the same five crappy blues licks. And you know, this whole analog versus digital thing, it's just dumb, you know? I mean, you know, if you're, the idea that you can't reproduce something in digital that, that can be done in analog, I mean, you know, in theory, I hope you can at least admit that in theory, that is ridiculous. In practice, maybe we haven't done it. I think in, for the most part we have, uh, but you know, it, it, oh man, forget the, forget the format. Just, just make stuff that's good. Analog and a digital guitar effect is just that, a difference. There are different options for different musical situations. Some of my favorite guitar effects are in fact digital and they sound amazing. Analog guitar pedals, especially older ones, are kind of more about the aesthetic that it offers the guitar player as opposed to the fact that the sound may or may not be able to be duplicated. They and, and this is the thing. It's like, why is a certain year or whatever a holy grail? We talk about stuff when, when there were still Jim Crow laws in, in America as like the best time when guitars were made. You, you really think that's the pinnacle of human civilization is... is is then uh what if you want something different why is that supposedly the better like it's so weird how people keep talking about these old vintage gibsons and fenders like there's something i don't want that crap man a big old round neck and teeny weeny little frets and and missing a couple frets and crappy noisy ass pickups like i don't i don't get it you know and, and the idea that oh this must be better because it's analog no it must be better because it's digital <laughs> I mean, you can say the same thing, at least in digital, if I want a delay that perfectly copies the input signal, it can. You can't say that about analog. So, yeah, this is silly. But I'm not freaking out. He's right. Can. Myth number five. Beginners should start with an acoustic guitar. Wrong. That's like hey, starting. That doesn't hurt. I mean, uh, I, I had to start on an acoustic guitar a little bit, but you, I mean, you shouldn't have to. I mean, that sounds like a myth to me, but I mean, I don't know who's saying that. Uh, just tell them to shut up. Starting to curl dumbbells with 40 pound weights instead of 10 pound weights. Look, guitar is hard enough because you have to strengthen yeah, muscles. Right. You've never extra burn your hand uh, on you. I'm yes, if you guitar, out, but also this. feel cool, don't you? I mean, ukulele six. Oh. I'm not saying it's not cool, but feel it's cool, ukulele, don't you? It's not cool. With a ukulele either. You want to feel cool, don't you? <laughs> I mean, ukulele. Don't come to wine after that. I'm saying it's that. not cool, but. It's not on an electric guitar. Myth number six, I like this one. You'll lose all your feel and emotion in your guitar playing if you learn music theory. Oh, That's kind of like a car mechanic trying to fix a car with only a screwdriver and a hammer. They may be able to get the job done, but there's a limited amount of what they can actually accomplish. Music theory is a tool belt and your musicianship is the car that you are working on. And those who tell you that music theory will negatively impact your guitar playing and creativity, well, those people don't know any music. <laughs> How, why am I supposed to freak out? He's totally right. You know, like, yeah, you're going to, uh, it, it doesn't hurt to know music. I'm, look, listen, you guys, some of you guys know the kind of crap I'm going through right now because we got a, a, a band playing out of key and, and out of tune and stuff and just, oh man. You're not going to get hurt by having more knowledge. I mean, that's that's just a, uh, oh, I, I know, you know, like, I, this maybe this comes from the fact that we make fun of recording schools. We don't make fun of recording schools because you're you're getting knowledge from them. We, we make fun of them because, you know, often they teach the wrong stuff. And, and, and this is one of those kind of fields where you need a lot of experience as well. But 
It's not because they're getting the knowledge, you know? I mean, knowledge is good. Theory themselves because they're lazy and they're <laughs> justifying their laziness with lies. Yeah. Put it this way. I'm you're never you. smarter for not knowing something. Myth number seven. You're beginner. never smarter for not knowing something. That's true. Oh, oh, okay. Here, this must be it. Beginners should start on an inexpensive guitar. Should start with inexpensive guitars. This is sort of similar to the whole beginners should start with an acoustic guitar fallacy. You shouldn't start with an inexpensive guitar if you have the means to afford a higher end guitar. Not only will you be able to improve faster and enjoy playing the guitar more. Yeah. Beginners shouldn't start with a crappy guitar is, is what uh, I... A few years ago, you could buy a Dean Vendetta XM. That was a uh, fixed bridge guitar, 24 frets, two humbuckers, a really flat neck, really good frets. Um, some of them had some pretty good upper fret access. This was $100. And I don't care how much you spend on a guitar. You're not necessarily going to get something any better than that. that. That guitar was as good as you needed to play no matter what. So it's not about the price. And I, I hate this whole you get what you pay for thing because uh, in this business, you can pay thousands of dollars for a word clock when a $60 one would do exactly the same thing. You don't get anything better out of this thousands of dollar nonsense, except a bunch of claims from, from people that are just making crap up. So it's not that it's inexpensive. Uh, you know, my guitars, like I, I have those, those agiles and stuff. They, everybody calls them cheap guitars or excellent guitars. Uh, so Maybe you should start on an inexpensive guitar, but it shouldn't be a piece of crap. Uh, the inexpensive, I mean, I will take a Dean, uh, I would take a Dean Vendetta, the $100 guitar, over any Gibson or Fender ever made. All the ones you guys talk about, these $50,000 vintage termite eating pieces of doggy do, uh, I would take that $100 guitar over that any day. So this whole expensive, not expensive thing is just nonsense. Because it's a higher quality instrument you'll be accountable for it you'll have but but in, in general he's right you shouldn't you shouldn't start out on a guitar that's hard to play i mean there's no reason for it there's just none but uh, i'm gonna move on there's nothing made it and you may forget about it start playing that but an amazing guitar player i can't stress that enough but there's a reason a les paul costs more than some starter guitar from target no because idiots pay for them okay Here's where I have a problem. Here, let's say the reason again. a Les Paul to become an amazing guitar player. I can't stress that enough. But there's a reason a Les Paul costs more than some starter guitar from Target. Okay. Again, I would take that hundred dollar Dean Vendetta over any Les Paul ever made. Those things to me are pieces of crap. I know a lot of people like them. They're missing some frets. They they. I mean, what? why would you pay that much money for a fixed bridge guitar with the... I mean, the set neck is cool, but it doesn't really give you that much upper fret access. And since it's missing frets anyway, what's the what's the point? Um, the reason Les Pauls cost more is because idiots will pay that money for them. It's not because it's some better guitar or something. What's, what's better about it? Because you got a sunburst finish on it or something? What is the... It's, that's not this better guitar. You just... People just pay more. You, you can get those Chibsons or whatever. You get a Les Paul for a hundred bucks or whatever, you know, maybe some of those have some quality issues, but I, I watch forum after forum talking about Gibson's quality issues. So it's not, no, the reason you pay more for a Les Paul is because bozos will pay for them. That's all. Not about a better guitar or something. It's a better guitar. No, it's Myth not. Myth number eight, heavier gauge strings are harder to play than light. You know, I'm about to think this is a, another one of these physics things. Heavier gauge strings are, okay, at any given tuning, the heavier gauge string is going to be harder to bend. It's going to be harder to press down. Uh, I think there's some some things about, it seems like if you've got really high tension, it, sometimes it can feel easier to pick. I think, I, I, I keep telling myself that, and every time I really try it out, I can't quite tell the difference, But it, but it does feel like, Sometimes the heavier gauges, they, they don't get stuck on your pick, or your pick doesn't get stuck on the strings. Let's see what he says. Lighter gauge strings. Okay, kind of, but not really. If you start on thinner strings, sure, it's going to be a little bit easier on your fingers than heavier gauge strings would be. 
but it's all relative. Your fingers will adapt to whatever gauge string you use. And No, no, no. I mean, no matter how strong your fingers get, there, there's going to be a limit to how much you can bend a string, and it's going to always be... At, at any given pitch, it's it's always going to be more on the lighter string. I don't know this. I don't think this is a myth. I mean, I don't know. Maybe the way it's phrased. And if you were using heavier gauge strings and you go back to a lighter gauge string, you'll be bending wildly out of tune, and the chords will have poor intonation because you'll be used to thicker gauge strings. Yeah, some of us play on scallops, so we we get used to a really light touch anyway, which uh, enhances our technique. So, no, thicker gauge strings aren't harder to play. They're just harder to play if you're used to playing lighter gauge strings. Oh, I think you're wrong here. And that reminds me, thicker strings don't necessarily mean thicker tone. Yes, remember we did some videos on that a couple years ago where we really tested different string sizes, different uh, a lot of different stuff. It was surprising uh, that uh, the the bigger string didn't make the, uh, the electric uh, change you would think it would. I mean, yes, Stevie Ray Vaughan used 13 gauge strings and his tone was absolutely iconic, but... I don't know. I, I know you guys love that Stevie Ray Vaughan, Ray, Ray Vaughan. I don't really remember what the big deal was, but I'm sure he's cool. His tone was iconic because of his fingers, not yeah. because of the strings he used. Yeah. Myth number nine, true bypass equals better tone. True bypass pedals actually suck a tiny little bit of your guitar signal out. True bypass also infers an added buffering function in the pedal, which would then subsequently boost the signal back to where... Uh, I don't know what true bypass is. Um, you know, we, we do have that thing in, in pro audio where the, the shorter the, the signal path, the less amplifiers in, in the way, the less distortion, the less noise, the less uh, frequency response gets changed, the less phase errors, the less uh, distortion, or did I already say that, less bandwidth loss, whatever. Um, I'm not sure what true bypass is. I, I remember, so a real bypass would just be you, you press a button and your signal completely switches out of the tone it's as if you rewired the uh, the signal to to not have the other circuit in the way. But he's talking about something buffered, so I wonder if this is like, I don't know, it makes up for the cable length of what's, I don't know. I, I don't know, I can't touch this one. Where it's supposed to be, but that technically wouldn't be a true bypass pedal then, would it? But honestly, can we even tell the difference in our tone? Yeah, see. No. 99% of us won't even notice, and 1% of us will claim that we do. The final myth, and perhaps the most controversial one of this entire list. I'm not going to make some friends on this one. Myth number 10. The wood a guitar is made from doesn't affect the tone. Oh, ah, yes. oh, oh you guys suck, man. Okay. <clears throat> so this is it. Why didn't you just tell me just go to number 10? Just go to number 10. So what is, is he seriously going to say that the... The wood is going to affect an electric guitar tone and, and, and say it's like it's a myth to say it's otherwise. That's, oh boy, he better bring some evidence. Man, this is one of those ones where, like Carl Sagan, right? Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Uh, let, let's see what we got the here. The wood a guitar is made from doesn't affect the tone. Ah, yes, the tone wood debate. I'm sure you've heard of this subject and the uproar it's caused in our lovely little guitar community to this day. Yes. The wood a guitar is made from absolutely 100% affects the way a guitar sounds. This okay, we're like a minute into this uh, myth debunk here. I haven't heard any evidence. He just says it it does. It changes the way the guitar sounds. Let's let's hear why. I don't hear why. Let's hear. 100% affects the. And he's really sure about it. 100% affects it way a guitar sounds this is especially obvious in acoustic guitars but it applies to electric guitars as well okay it is obvious in an acoustic guitar i don't think it's the species of wood how do you know maybe that year they had a lot of rain or something it could be extra dense that wood uh it's it's going to be like isn't it going to be density that matters not the not the the species or you know, cause this is the one we always see. Like somebody's like, oh, I got a mahogany guitar and I want an EMG. And they go, oh, no, you can't use an EMG in a mahogany guitar. It has to be for a alder body guitar or something. These guys are idiots. I mean, like, like it's going to make any difference. Listen, okay, go ahead and flame me and never believe another word I say. But your pickup in your guitar 
is like an alternator in your car. Instead of a, a rotational, you know, a magnet spinning around some wires uh, rotating, this is just uh, uh, reciprocating. It's going back and forth. It's doing the same thing. Um, go make your car hood out of wood and see if it changes the way your car charges. You know, turn your headlights on, change your, change your hood out real quick from wood to metal and, and see if your lights look any different. I mean, this is, this is silly. Let's, let's go on. If it didn't, then why would a guitarist prefer a mahogany body or an alder body? Or... Because they like the way it looks. What do you, is this appeal to emotion right here? Like, listen, when you make something this big, giant scientific claim that flies in the face of all physics and electric, electrical knowledge, you better bring some evidence. And, and the evidence is why would a guitar player want this body or not body? They, they like the way it looks. I got quilted maple tops on my guitars. Man, I love the way those things look. It's not going to make it sound different. Rose wooden, then why would a Let's guitarist see. prefer a mahogany body or an alder body or rosewood neck or a maple neck? Those who don't believe the wood a guitar is made from affects the tone claim that the pickups, the magnetic pickups in the electric guitar are doing all the work and the wood is just there to... I don't know, look neat. Here's yeah, that's exactly what we're claiming. And, you know, you don't just get to win your debate by by just acting like tossing us off or something. Listen, you, you got to bring evidence when you're making a claim like that. Yes, uh, an electric guitar pickup, It's the, the sound is generated by metal waving over a magnet. You know, that's that's how electricity works. It's not... Doesn't how many times have you seen guys like nail a string into a into a piece of concrete and put a pickup underneath it and it sounds just like a guitar? Well, that's because that's what a guitar is. It's an electric guitar. Uh, you you could I, I guarantee you you could go search right now on on YouTube and you'd find guitars made out of like two by fours and you know who knows what man. I think they've had like a cardboard Fender Strat or something. I mean you, you're gonna make claims like this. You better bring some evidence. I. I see that there's a lot left on this uh, on this video, so maybe there is some evidence coming. Let's let's see. Instead of just claims and just bald assertions, let's see some evidence. Here's the thing: are doing all the work, and the wood is just there to, I don't know, look neat. Here's the thing: the strings may not physically touch the wood, but the energy from a strummed string goes through the bridge up the neck into the nut, those frequencies move through the different types of wood. The fact of the matter is, if somebody says that the wood doesn't affect guitar tone, they probably don't have enough credibility to even make oh, that claim. Oh, but... man. So, again, no evidence. This time it's an ad hominem. If somebody tells you that, uh, they just they must not know anything about guitars. No, no, no. Bring your evidence. You're going to make a claim like that. You're going to tell us the world is flat. You better bring us some evidence about it. This is ridiculous. These are just bald assertions. Our tone, they probably don't have enough credibility to even make that claim. But, hey, who says I have any credibility to make the claim that wood does affect guitar tone. If only there was some undeniable source with the utmost credibility who could settle this for us, somebody who has built one of the most iconic guitar brands in the world, who has created a guitar from any type of wood you could possibly imagine. If only we had someone to set the record straight on tone. You know, is, is this guy seriously <laughs> setting up? Okay, so, so, so far we've had zero evidence We've had some insults. We've had some bald assertions. And now this guy seems to be setting up, and I joke, kid you not, an appeal to authority. This is 100% fully. Yeah, okay, so you back our heads. Like, yeah, you're right. I'm going to freak out on this. This guy just, you know, he, he, he went, you know, made a lot of sense early on. And then now he's just like flying off the logical fallacy deep end here what the hell so he's, he's going to bring in some guy that's going to tell us because he made some guitars that that he knows that 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 physics is wrong okay wood for us wait i know just the guy i have read on the internet that people have said there are no such thing as tone woods okay so now we have paul reed smith who uh Won the Nobel Prize in Physics for his uh, electrical knowledge or something. The guy makes guitars, man. I've I seen guitar guys say all kinds of crazy crap. What? Okay, well, maybe he's going to bring us the, the actual evidence. I have a 20,000 watt PA here. What bullshit. <laughs> okay, so bald assertion. All right, so let me explain this. If that's true, and I'm 
Mark Ramona violin maker. If I make it out of balsa wood, it won't make any difference, right? No, that's a straw man. Uh, if you make a violin out of balsa wood, I, I doubt the thing's going to hold together, for one thing. And, you know, an acoustic instrument, I think wood density matters. And in general, balsa wood is probably going to be lighter than some other wood. So, uh, yeah, this is a straw man. I mean, come on. Oh, so, so this is like when you talk to anti-vaxxers, right? It's the argument by, come on. You know what chemicals they put in there? Come on. Argument by, uh, what do you call it? Argument from personal incredulity. All right, man, we're just knocking the fallacies out of the park here. This is like, how much worse could you possibly do? You're going to bring like a flat earther on here in a second. No matter what mic you put on Barbara Streisand, she's not going to sound like Paul Rogers. That isn't going to happen. Okay, go, go, put a, go put a mic on your guitar, and I guarantee it doesn't sound anything like a guitar through a pickup. Right? No matter what mic you put on Frank Sinatra, it's not going to sound like Barbara Streisand. It isn't going to happen. The idea that tone ones don't make any difference is just a bunch of, it's just a load of crap. Oh, yeah. So, again, no no evidence, just a bald assertion. Again. Because Frank Sinatra's dead. So is Stradivari, but you want one of his violins. You know, that's not the best example to bring up. How many... Uh, you guys remember just a couple of years ago, we had all those uh, violin players get to listen to $60 violins up to the Stradivariuses and stuff. And they couldn't tell which one was which. Some of them preferred the cheaper violins and stuff. So get out of here with that nonsense. Oh, yeah, you totally just won that one with that non-evidence. Okay, so we got this, this guy's just hitting uh, wood made of, you know, different, he's hitting blocks made of different woods, and somehow that's supposed to change the way electricity works, uh, I guess, is the evidence. I mean, I'm not going to freak out. These guys are just dumb. I mean, <laughs> you, 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 don't, you don't make... You don't make arguments, especially when you're going in the face of like all known science, just by asserting stuff. You got you got to bring some evidence to the table. Come on. That was the PA system. Hey, was it loud? Very loud, right? Mm -hmm. Hurt your ears more yourself, right? And they think that this makes no difference in like the guitar. <laughs> Look at this guy gaslighting everybody. What a chode, man. Uh, you know, I, I don't really like the Paul Reed Smith stuff because I, the last one I saw had, like, you couldn't adjust the intonation on an electric guitar, so I don't really care. But, sheesh, this guy is just, what a piece of work this dude is. It has to make a difference. It has to make a difference. Yeah, sure. <laughs> So there you have it, guys. Oh, yeah, there we have it. Zero evidence. You presented zero evidence. What the hell's wrong with you? You got a Dunning-Kruger, man. Guitar myths dispelled. Yeah, Do you dispelled agree with me? No? Well, leave your comments down below. I'd love to hear from you, honestly. I mean, I'm human. I could be wrong. Yeah, no, no. Well, I hope you enjoyed this maybe controversial video, and I'll be back with another. You know, I, this guy can't be that stupid. Like, maybe he just put that there to... To really rile us up and get his, uh, he's almost 400,000 views on this thing. Um, but yeah, uh, this guy's dumb. I, I mean, that, that, that claim was lame. All right, anyway, uh, that's enough for this one. I, there's a couple more I, I, I got to get to, but this was the one everybody.